<laughs> okay, we got this in time. Welcome everybody to the Saratoga podcast. It is our season three, you guys, season three premiere today. Wow. We've been doing this for going, this will be our third year and like our 70 something episode. And we haven't killed each other yet. I know. But and some things don't change. Like Dan still doesn't have Wi-Fi. I do have Wi-Fi. I have problems with the computer itself. Problems with the general computer problems per se. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I'm gonna, to gonna, about? gonna be our. This is gonna be our first, uh, our second new, I guess, city council. And it just, we, you know, how closely we followed it. It's the closest I've followed local politics my whole life. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see how now with a new mayor and a new commissioner of public safety, how how the dynamics of the city council changes and 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 how they conduct the meetings and how our city operates going forward. But we we have three uh, commissioners who return. One of them is the commissioner of public works. Jason Golub, and I believe we have him here with us, Robin. Is that correct? We do, but really quick, before we jump into Commissioner Golub, I just want to say the last time I think we all chatted was just after the election in November. So like you said, Adam, a lot has transpired. We had kind of a wild uh, month of December with some like marathon kind of crazy city council meetings that we can touch on in a little bit, um, followed by a very... Um, positive and uplifting feeling inauguration on Monday where the new city council was inaugurated and the first city council meeting was last night. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting Commissioner Golub on and getting his thoughts on the new year, the new dynamic. One, Dan, one, yeah, sorry, we... I want to jump in. We, we were gone for a long time and you, you alluded to that, Robin, but uh, uh, folks, we, we wanted to get on and uh, life got in the way in December and we just made a conscious decision like, you know, you know what, we we're just not gonna be able to do it this month. So we're, we we promise never to do that again, never to take an entire month off, or at least give you a notice that we are. We we know how much you rely on us, but thank you. We actually got really nice comments uh, as the people missing us. So th thank you for that. And 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 we're ready to hit, hit it hard in 2024. Absolutely, cheers to that. And I missed you guys in December. I mean, if I don't get my Dan and Adam fix on Wednesdays, I'm, you know, what's, my what's week the... is incomplete. We, we've never even so much as gone out for a drink. Shame on us. I mean, we don't want to tell people we actually booze every night, but, you know, let's keep that between the three of us. Anyway, let's welcome, for the first time on the Saratoga podcast, I might add, Commissioner Jason Golub. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. This is, I think you were the lone holdout from the last city council in terms of getting people on the show. So we're so happy to have you today. Well, you know, I like to play hard to get, so <laughs> here we are. <laughs> love it, love it. So, um, so much went on last year, and you know, so much of the the makeup of the city council has obviously changed going into twenty twenty four. But I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you're looking forward to accomplishing in this upcoming year with DPW, which is, of course, the department that you're the head of. Uh, the you're the commissioner of public works, um, and some of the things you're working on and kind of looking forward to. Awesome. So, you know, as you mentioned, DPW, we have a, can you hear me okay? We have a little bit of feedback. Okay. Yeah. I hear that as well. Uh, echo is what I'm hearing. Yeah. It's, you, um, why don't we mute on our ends just in case? All right. Carry on, Jason. All right. Is that better? Oh yeah. That seems better. Okay. So, you know, DPW, we have a, an ambitious agenda for 2024 as we did in 2023. Um, I've always said my my mission with DPW is to is to expand how people think about public works in the city. Um, we're obviously known for the you know maintaining the infrastructure, the city, the streets, plowing the roads, picking up the leaves. But you know we've also focused on building new parks and playgrounds and more green space, uh, sidewalks, trails, um, and tackling some of the kind of the intractable problems the city is facing, whether it's the homeless problem or affordable housing. Um, so really, our 2024 agenda really kind of covers the waterfront. Um, people are talking, obviously, about the tourist paid parking program, which we're leading, and I'm happy to answer questions about that. Um, but beyond that, uh, we're building a new park uh, at Excelsior next to the water treatment plant in 2024. Oh, wow. There'll be a community garden. There'll be a dog park. Um, so that's one thing we're doing. Um, we're expanding the parking lot at the rec center, which people have been asking for for years because the parking there is an absolute disaster. Um, we're gonna continue to work on Grand Avenue um, 
and taking first steps on building the sidewalk and multi-use trail there. Um, we're work working with Pitney Meadows and the Y on doing a, a light there and, and a sidewalk there. Um, we're working with some private residents and the community on Veterans Memorial Park uh, and really just kind of expanding that and, and making that a state-of-the-art facility. Um, we're gonna have a lot of work in advance of the Belmont Stakes, obviously making the city look as spectacular as it possibly can. Um, we're building a, a mountain bike park. So we have, we have a ton going on in 2024 and I'm just trying to kind of hit the highlights uh, really, really quickly. I'm happy to dive into any of them. Um, we're doing a, a, an arts initiative, art in, art in the city, where we want to do big murals throughout the city. We're calling it public works through public works. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dad joke. I'm sorry. I can't help myself. I like it. <laughs> um, but, but again, it's really, you know, expanding the vision and the reach of, of public works to really drive impactful change and the future direction of the city from an infrastructure perspective. Jason, let me ask you a, a light question before we get into the, you know, because I know we do want to talk about the paid parking proposal, but uh, yeah. winter so far has been very mild and, and you know, skiers like I hate it. There's no snow. How much does having snow or not snow affect your budget? I mean, is this kind of a little windfall right now? Knock on wood. I know we're so early for the Department of Public Works, or is this all kind of averaged out over a year? I mean, is, is the amount of snow, how much does that affect your budget? Do you lose sleep over it? No, no. I think, you know, uh, knock on wood, I would absolutely love to have a mild winter. I'm not a skier and uh, our, our team, you know, it works around the clock when there's a snowstorm. And so, you know, not having a ton of snow actually helps our team keep normal, normal business hours and focus on other areas of public works. Um, but we view it as the, there will likely be snow and rain and ice and it's just a matter of when, not if. Um, so if we, you know, if we don't have any snow by March, you can ask me that question again, and I'll, I'll probably give you a different answer on the, the budget impact. But right now, I just don't, I don't see it being particularly impactful. All right. As a public sector worker who once relied on a little bit of overtime, <laughs> I'm feeling for your employees. That is, yeah, and that that is the reality. Is the, the team does get, you know, is able to get overtime by working you know, four in the morning when they're plowing the streets. Yeah. You know that that that's a real issue. So quick question for you as well. I, I feel like you've gotten so much done with DPW because of kind of this vision you've had for it, but also you seem to have a real knack for working with people across the political spectrum yeah. um, in, in a way that um, some of the other city council members haven't been able to do in the last two years. What's kind of your secret sauce? What, how, do you, how, do, how have you approached issues here um, to you know, unify people and get things done? Yeah, uh, I don't know that I have a secret sauce. I just, I'm just focused on getting shit done versus party politics or politics period. Um, my view is public works is for the entire city. It's not, I'm not doing public works for Democrats or public works for Republicans. And so for me, however, I, whoever I need to work with who has that shared vision and who wants to get stuff done for the city is, is someone I want to partner with. Um, and I, I find that you just get more done that way anyway rather than you know, infighting amongst the council or you know, fighting with external parties. It's just, it's not productive. So it's yeah. just, I've tried to avoid it when I can and, and treat everyone with respect and just focus on getting the work of public works uh, move forward. Yeah, cheers to that. I love, that's a great approach. <laughs> And obviously it's been very effective. So one of the things you mentioned um, that you are working on that I know has been like a very hot button issue in Saratoga historically has been the um, idea of paid parking. And yeah. um, I know people like me admittedly hear paid parking and are like, oh, hell no, because, you know, it brings to mind one whole vision, which to me would be like a hellscape. But yeah. you have a really specific proposal that you're rolling out, and I would love for you to kind of give people an overview of what that is going to look like. Yeah, sure. So, you know, we are certainly aware of the historic, you know, starts and stops with paid parking in the city. And we looked at every study that's ever been done, and we talked to most everyone who's been involved in paid parking to, to learn both what worked, but also obviously what didn't work. Um, and I think we were very intentional with our approach to uh, not bite off too much uh, at this point and really focus on, one, how do we focus on, on providing services still for the residents so they have free parking while, while creating new revenue for the city to, again, um, tackle some of our intractable problems, which is 
passing that on to tourists. Um, the, the, and so really our, our focus is on tourist paid parking in the garages and surface lots during track season. And that is- well, that's the, that really is the, important. Right, and so when people hear paid parking, they think, oh, now I have to pay to park on the streets of, of the city. No, residents and people who are employees of our businesses will get passes and they'll be able to park on any of the city streets. And importantly, tourists won't. Tourists will not have those passes. And so if you wanna go downtown, you park and you park as long as you want. And the tourists are, the idea is to push them into the garages and service lots where they're paying. And this will generate two or $3 million of new revenue for the city, uh, which we'll be able to use to not raise taxes. We'll be able to use to fund our, our third fire station, to build a homeless shelter, whatever it may be. Our city continues to grow and continues to have bigger city problems we need to address. And there aren't that many revenue levers you can pull that can really create significant new revenue for a city. And this happens to be one of them. And so and we so really studied it's not year round. It's just for, it's five months of the year. It's June to October, sorry, it's May to October. Um, so it's really just the, the high season. And then the rest of the year, the garages and everything else are free for everybody. Uh, and so we sat down with as many constituents as we could. We sat down with uh, members of the, the DBA. We sat down with individual business owners. We sat down with the, uh, the chamber. We sat down with special assessment, trying to get a sense of, are you, are you directionally on board with this? Um, and for the most part, the answer was yes, you've, you've designed this in a narrow enough way where it, it solves a problem um, and creates new revenue and doesn't have a, a negative impact on, on our residents. Can, can, can I jump in there on, on a problem? Can you clarify, and I'm not being uh, um, uh, negative here, but I, no. I just, and I know there's problems, but what is the key problem? What, what is the problem or what are the key problems? When you say problems, what do you mean? Well, you just said it solves a problem, and I guess I'm inquiring what what is the most. Is there so, a uh, well, sorry, when I say it solves a problem, it's the problem of creating new revenue sources for the city. So, and the problem is not going to solve. It could be anything from, you know, our garages have become homeless shelters. Our garages are not safe, and so now we have new revenue sources to make them clean and safe and have cameras and security. It could be the you know, funding of a fire station. It could be any number of downstream problems that it solves. But the problem is without raising taxes, there aren't that many sources where you can pull new significant revenue for a city. And parking happens to be one of them. I would also argue that like, we don't do parking well, just in general. Like no one says like, wow, Saratoga Springs is a great place to like go find a parking spot in. So right. just- and, and, that, and that is part of the reality. We looked at, there are, you know, 80 or 90 different parking rules and regulations right now that apply to the city streets downtown. It, it, it's actually kind of a nightmare. And part of our process will be streamlining that so it will be much easier for residents to understand, I can park here for the day versus two hours here, one hour here, loading dock here. You know, it's, it, it's really not, a, not a, a consistent system as it stands now, which creates chaos for both residents, but also for tourists. And so part of our effort will be to streamline that as well. Commissioner, I commend you on this uh, report that was done. I liked how you studied uh, Newport, Rhode Island, and a lot of New England uh, cities, uh, roughly Saratoga size. Yeah. Did, did, did you look at cities that that decided, no, we're just going to keep the free parking. We're not going to go the paid route. Did you have a chance? And maybe that was in there. I apologize that I missed it. But I'm just He's wondering said, if there was a, a same, anybody, anybody that stayed the route that Saratoga's been going and, and just kept going. So, Dan, I'll be honest with you. There are not a lot of cities in America where – Paid parking is a is a thing. Any uh, sorry, free parking is a thing anymore. Most Not cities, you're to, yeah, <laughs> most cities you're going to go to, you're going to pay for your parking, and that's just the reality. Um, what we wanted to do is look at how cities have had success or failures, and specifically on cities that are similarly situated to Saratoga Springs. So, like Newport, Rhode Island, similar population, similarly tourist, similarly a tourist destination. They have a very robust parking program. And so we learned a lot about what worked and what didn't work from them. Uh, same with uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Um, and so we really, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel here. We wanted to look at cities that had succeeded with this, learn from them, and then, and then either iterate on what they'd done or implement what they'd done. 
Jason, have you looked at yet? You, you know, I know you kind of ref, you, you referenced it a little bit. The the what the city is going to profit from doing this, but you know, there's going to be a cost to administering this, and there's going to be revenue taken in after you know the revenue taken in minus the cost to administer. Do you have an idea of roughly what the city will bring in each year from this program? Yeah, so we 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 do, and our, our presentation walks through that a bit, and it, you know, it's somewhere in that two to two and a half million dollars. Uh, we we in year one we. We believe, and that's a very, very conservative estimate. We we use that as basically a, a, the garage is being thirty five percent filled as as our revenue generating number. And so, assuming that they're not going to be filled thirty five percent, that number could be significantly higher. To your point, our our expenses in year one might also be significantly higher than we're anticipating. And so, we err on the side of being conservative with with the revenue projections for for year one. I will say on the expense side, just because when I was doing public safety, we looked into doing paid parking in some of the garages. It actually was like shockingly less expensive than I thought because of how we issue parking tickets already. That system has systems in place to do paid parking. So implementing it was like shockingly easy and inexpensive if we had gone that route, which was just surprising to me at the time. Right. And some of them will be one time setup costs essentially. And once yeah. you have those, you're not going to, they're not going to be repeated. We're not going to be putting in you know, parking meters every year. Once we when we once we put in the the, the initials group, we're, we're done, and so that will also increase our revenue. Would that be capital expense, or would that just go in? in I guess no, it's a no. It's not that isn't a capital expense. So I know that the safety and security um, of people when they're in parking garages, specifically, I know the Woodlawn parking garage has been an issue. So these, would the revenue like be earmarked in part to, you know, bolster security in the garages? Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is essentially that the, the city garages would, would effectively look like the city center garage. They would be very safe. They'd be very secure. There'd be cameras. There'd be um, people there 24 seven and, and, it would be someplace where we would want to send our visitors. Um, right. It would be somewhere where our visitors would feel safe. Um, and that's a lot of what I heard from the business community. Um, yes, parking is free today in a garage, but nobody wants to send their customers to that garage. Yeah. It's not safe. Uh, there's, there's urine and feces in the stairwells. There's people sleeping in the stairwells. If you run a hotel, if you run a business, that isn't where you want to send your, your customers. And yeah. so, there is the reality of this is going to significantly upgrade these garages, which is good for these businesses. Um, and, and we've heard that. And, and even the employees, a lot of employees don't feel safe parking in that garage. They'll go park in the city center garage or they'll move their car every two hours on the street because the garage isn't, they don't feel safe there. So Come it's, in. sorry, oh, go ahead. Okay, thank you. You're, you're going to think I'm uh, not in support of this. And I, let me clarify, I am, but I do have yeah. some, some, Skeptic type questions. That's uh, May to October, surely as night follows day, it just seems to me that's going to be extended uh, into New Year's Eve to start, perhaps uh, you know May to uh, December thirty first, and and so forth. Um, what what would you say to to me or someone that says it, it it will be extended? Maybe that's not a bad thing, but I just feel certainly at some point it'll be extended. So so part of what our goal is to make sure that we're building a program that is supporting our local businesses. And the reality is in the off season, that isn't when our, our local businesses get the majority of their revenue. And so we don't want to do anything that undermines their ability to generate revenue in the off months and forcing people to pay for parking in December when, you know, they aren't generating as much revenue from tourists is not something that we we're looking to do. The idea is to do this during our high season when we have the most tourists and we can generate the most revenue. Uh, and not to not to create a situation for our local businesses in the off season where uh, it might it might undermine their ability to succeed. So I, I don't have a plan to expand it beyond our, our high season. Thank you. Well, I think it sounds I I think it sounds promising, and I think it it really does the way you're proposing it address a lot of the kind of knee jerk uh, concerns that I've had in the past, mm -hmm. and I know other Saratogians have had in the past about the idea of paid parking. Um, so there, will, there, will continue to be, there will continue to be conversations and, you know, intelligent people can disagree on whether it's a good idea or not. Uh, I heard some comments last night that, you know, were you know, saying, you know, this is not a great idea. And the example was around, 
you know, the, the movie theaters and, and it just, it felt that particular example didn't feel correct to me only because the parking is free for residents. And so why would a resident not come downtown and use our movie theater and go to the Wilton mall? Um, yeah. because Wilton mall has free parking. Well, the Wilton mall is, is a ghost town, it's empty yeah. and it's free parking for years. So the free parking isn't drawing people to the Wilton mall. I'll tell you that. Uh, so, Definitely you know, not. some of it is just, you know, I, I, I hear what people are saying and I, and I respect that people have looked at this before. Uh, we're trying to do this in a thoughtful way that will, uh, still encourage all of our residents to come downtown because the parking is still going to be free for them. Yeah, I, I, I want to add, I, I think as somebody who was born and raised here and saw the transformation that city the city went through, I do believe it's a different city. It's a, We do have big city problems now, not facing the same challenges. And, and I, I agree, I think it's time. And I, I appreciate your kind of, your measured approach to this instead of just, all right, you know, all paid all the time, everyone. Uh, we, you know, all right. Let's take a let's take a bite off of, of the busiest season and do it in a way that it impacts our tourists and not our or the locals who already pay the, a lot of time here. So, for whatever yeah. it's, worth, I think it's a great uh, great program. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, and I, I agree. I think I think that's where the disconnect often happens is people who look at Saratoga Springs from 30 years ago and 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 say it didn't work then, and I'm like, well, this is not this isn't a town anymore. This is a small city, and we have small city problems and we need to generate revenue to solve those problems. And these are problems that our community wants us to solve. Um, and so this is an avenue to do that without negatively impacting the residents. I also think though, one of the like most important things you said when you're you know talking about this, that I think a lot of times is skipped in terms of the step and um, you know creates problems is you talk to all the people who have researched this and studied this in the past because it has been so studied, so discussed, so debated, and there is a wealth of knowledge that exists already from people who have tried to address this issue in the past. And so just talking to those people, talking to the stakeholders, talking to the business community and getting all that feedback is just, in my opinion, how you have to do things in Saratoga if you want them to be successful and productive. And so, you know, taking those first steps, you know, just lays the groundwork for success. So well, let's hope. Well, done, sir. <laughs> <laughs> But we have a comment, and somebody asked about uh, um, the parking app. I mean, so have you have you given thought yet? Have you? Uh, there we go. I'll let you read the read the comment. Um, I think that's. I'm not sure you guys are at that level of detail yet with this plan. Yeah, this is this is where we this is where we are now. We're starting to look at the 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 logistics of how to implement. And so I don't have an answer for that question today, but I'm happy to come back on in in a few weeks and and get into the the kind of the nitty gritty of like this is what it will look like. Uh, in practice. Awesome. Right. Really quick, because I know we've had you on for longer than discussed okay. already, <laughs> but um, I just would love to kind of get your feedback on what the feel and kind of vibe is of the new council with um, two new, you know, a new mayor and a new public safety commissioner. Um, you had your first city council meeting last night. Um, did it feel different? How, how did it go? Yeah. So like, I think they're, they're in day three now. So they're drinking from the fire hose. Um, <coughs> Every day is probably, you know, a very new day for them. And so I'm trying to give them as much support as I can in terms of, you know, this is what I've found to work. This is what I've found to not work. Um, and I think I think John did an excellent job with the first meeting last night. It was a short meeting, which I think you all know is, is a good meeting in my book. Um, <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's looking to implement some new rules, which um, he got some feedback from the public last night that they weren't necessarily... Um, all in favor of um, my biggest my biggest concern, which I voiced to him, and and I will continue, is to make sure that whatever rules you put in place are applied evenly and objectively across the board. Uh, yeah. And without applying them to different people in different ways, it doesn't really matter what the rule is. You're going to run into trouble. And so, that to me is the most critical piece: is is put in place the rules you want to run, to run the meeting the way you think this meeting should be run, but understand that once you start, you know, applying it unevenly, it's going to, it's going to be problematic. By the way, on this show, we can, we can clap yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. so, so I think he heard that and I think that yeah. we will continue to iterate on those rules and look, I think, I think both him and Tim will bring a lot to the table and I'm, I'm excited to work with, with the whole council. 
it, yeah, it's it does seem to me like everyone is really committed to working together yeah. with the other city council people. Well, to me, you know, I mean, I'll say this until until I'm out of office. Like, as long as you're looking to get stuff done uh, and work together to get stuff done, uh, you're I'm a fan and I'm happy to work with you. And it's when you get into the 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 politics and the fighting and the, the disrespect that I that I largely lose interest and we'll just focus on DPW. <laughs> If, if, if I can add, uh, Monday's inauguration, you know, nice and political events do not go together that often. But that was one of the nicest feel-good events uh, that I've been to in, in, you know, probably decades. Yeah, I agree. It was really good. And, and I hope it continues. It and your remarks up. are fantastic. Thank you. I look, I, I don't think, I don't think acrimony leads to success. I think quite the opposite. And I, I hope that the the way that the inauguration went will will be how, how things continue. Well, and clearly voters don't like the acrimony either. You know that was that was clearly mm -hmm. the feedback we got in November. So, yeah, um, right. well, I know we all have really high hopes, and we're all grateful for a functional and civil um, city council. And it sounds like you know DPW is just rocking it as always. So, mm -hmm. kudos exactly. to everyone in your awesome department. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And Anything thank you for the playground at Waterfront Park, by the by. Isn't that amazing? Yes. yes. I mean, I went over there. The view, the view when you're on the swings is amazing. Yes. It's, yes. It's and folks, check it out over on Crescent Avenue. But yeah, that side of town, for whatever reason, just does not have did not have a playground, and so uh, we'll continue to put in more playgrounds and, and green space. Um, and uh, yeah, excited yes. for 2024. Parks and playgrounds all day long. Yeah. We're sold. Yeah. Parks, exactly. playground, paid parking. You've got some nice alliteration here. All <laughs> <teach that. laughs> Well, Commissioner, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your service and thank you for signing on for another two years. It's my pleasure. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. All right. Well, that was great. R Robin, a bit of housekeeping. I don't know if you saw in the chat. Does does our next guest have, have uh, a link? Um, uh, not that I sent, but okay. I can send. Okay. Um, yeah, I, uh, sorry, I emailed you. I should have given you a better yeah, heads up. On, one sec. Excuse me for one sec. I'll just, I'll send it right now. One sec. Okay. Oh, Adam, uh, yeah. what, what'd you do for New Year's? Dance? Well, I, I, what'd you think of, what, what, so you're, you're in favor of this pay, paid program, paid parking, huh? Um, more, more than I, I partially because I, I thought as, as was said here, it, it was well researched well done i i think with with you know from my personal perspective not that commissioner gold has a halo above his head but he's got a certain amount of or quite a bit amount of uh, credibility so if he's you know if, if he's creating and so forth it's 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 not an automatic with me but i'm uh, you know i'm more upbeat than not yeah i feel like uh uh the amount of cities I go to that are like Saratoga that have they, they all have paid parking now. Yeah. So it just seems that that's where people expect it. It's not it's not going to I, make us a pariah. And and we are you know you know you have in, in in business you call the economies of scale where you keep growing so big and all of a sudden then to take that next step is huge investments. Well, we're as a city have grown to that next step where we're now a small city. You, you, you know we're now. With, with with city problems, whereas before we were a small city with rural problems that were a lot cheaper than city problems, and so we're going to have to start to find ways to to equitably raise revenue. And as as much as I hate that saying, you know, as a, a fiscal conservative, um, it is it, you know cities do need money to run. So yeah, uh, and, I, and and to your point, I expect to pay when I go to a city that's a tourist area. I just like okay, if I don't pay, I'm going to get towed. I know it. So where do I pay? How do I pay? But it's also like, you know, the expense of the, of the city do continue to increase. And especially like you look at the third fire station, it's such a perfect example. Now, I wish that, you know, we had kind of planned and funded slightly more comprehensively for the third station. Um, but be that as it is, you, you don't have a lot of options in terms of raising revenue unless you just want to keep raising property taxes, which I think is not the right avenue to go, you know, and so... Um, I think Commissioner Golub has, uh, you know, identified the paid parking revenue stream and, and approached in the right way. So, um, yeah, I mean, I was like die hard against paid parking, and I'm I'm pretty much on board with this plan. Hey guys, let me let me ask you a quick why why we're waiting for our next guest. That's uh, you, you know, I always love 
and the day after the Super Bowl, they're already picking the the, the who's going to win the next Super Bowl. So, <laughs> so the you know, three days three days after the inauguration, who do you guys see as the Democrats running for the next mayor? Let's play a fun game. Well, I could see our previous guest being an excellent candidate for mayor if he were so inclined. Um, I think he's someone that, uh, you know, could unify a lot of different factions of the Democratic Party and just kind of voters in general in Saratoga. So I could see, I could so see. He, uh, he would, not, he, would he be your favorite, like your favorite, meaning your odds? You know, who, 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 who's the um, three to one favorite to, to run next year at the Democratic line? I don't know. I mean, I know that I think. You know, actually, interestingly, I, I also think Commissioner Moran has expressed interest in running for mayor at some point. Uh -huh. And so I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to I, think about that before I gave odds. I, I agree. Commissioner, Commissioner Gold would make an excellent mayor. But it is clear to me, based on one and a half meetings so far, that Commissioner Moran is running for mayor in 2025. I'll, I'll take bets on that. It is clear to me the way he's acting, his, yeah. his demeanor. He's, you know, he's trying to be the alpha male at these meetings. He's do you think um, that's the right the way smartest to... person in the room it's clear to me i'll take bets on that i don't know if being the alpha male is a great like you I, know. I, I agree it's annoying uh, that's i guess that's my 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 point it's uh uh but it it, it seems that way to me that's only my opinion that's my observations i'm all right so i'm i'm, I'm gonna put my money on uh ron kim 2.0 is coming back Stop. <laughs> i think oh I, my God. I think rod did a lot of moves on his way out that were that kind of signified that it wasn't done yet. And so I, no. I, I think if you look at the numbers, if, if Matisse wasn't in that race, it was a close race. I, I think, I think, you know, the run lost because of Matisse. I don't I think, think the Democrats want Ron Kim back. Yeah. With you. I really don't. He feels I, like, like yes, I don't think Ron Kim wants to come back. I, yeah, but yeah. I, I feel like the Republicans don't want Trump. The Democrats don't want Biden, but we still get him. You know, you I see the Republicans. It, it, politics legacy seems to carry the day. Um, if um, John Safford chose not to run again, I could see some of the former Republican candidates wanting to run again, though. I could, like, I could see Heidi uh, West wanting to run again now that there seems to be an avenue for Republicans to win um, on the yeah. Republican side if John didn't run again. Good, good, good question, though, Adam. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, I think we do have our next guest. Speaking of, I think you guys were just chatting about your New Year's. Um, Robert Millis, are you there, sir? Yep, here I am. Hey, here he is. Hey, yes. hey. How, How are you? you? I'm hunting for my ski jacket I lost because I'm going skiing this weekend. You are? Is there snow to be skied on? Yes, it's called Utah. <laughs> All right. Yes, totally. That sounds great. Yep. But I did. In all the commotion at the city center this weekend, I lost my ski jacket. Mm. Well, that's thanks. Sorry yeah. about that. Hey, a great, great uh, applause for you and so many others. I, I know it's not just Robert Millis, a lot of entities, a lot of people. What a ridiculously terrific weekend uh, with New Year's Eve it was. I was there with my family for the fireworks, the magic show, family friendly. Then it gets, you know, more adult in the evening. Uh, I, I'm just, just high on everything that went on uh, this weekend. Yeah, can we give our guests actually a proper introduction so people know yes. who we're talking to? That's right. Good point. So um, Bob Nellis has been instrumental in the reimagining of how the city of Saratoga Springs celebrates its New Year's and really orchestrates all of the entertainment, pretty much runs the show, Bob. Would you agree? On New Year's mm. Eve? You, I mean, you really There's are. Bunch of us. Well, I'm going to give major credit to you. I mean, you you really pushed this kind of reimagined uh, New Year's Eve, and it's just been such a success. So we are thrilled to have you on to talk about how it went this year um, and get your feedback on how it went and, you know, celebrate 2024. Do you want to give us some some uh, oh, no, uh, kind of a recap of, of from your perspective, uh, I think we can... how well it went? I think Bob might be. Oh, oh, you froze on us. Yeah, there's a signal issue here. If you uh, are, you... see, You're Robin, breaking... it's not just me. <laughs> You're breaking up a little bit, Bob. All the old guys. <laughs> signal. 
You know, we should have asked Commissioner Golub about the freaking sci-fi, Adam. We need broadband, people. I know, I know. Bob, are uh, you back? Uh, all right, how about now? Am I back? Awesome, yes. I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So I think Dan I, had just uh, asked you. Um, to answer Dan's question, no doubt about it. Oh, man, it was an overwhelming success. Overwhelming Plain success. Simple. Oh well. Yeah. Bob, the sense uh, of having not only by from our point of view, but more important. All right. Maybe All right, try I'm again gonna, some other time. I'm try again. Do you have a sense of how many people um, came out this year to to celebrate New Year's in Saratoga? Yeah, uh, about six, seven thousand people downtown. Yes. Wow. And how you, there were so many different entertainment options for people. Um, you know, what were kind of the most popular or kind of the most successful? Well, obviously that outdoor block party experiment was a big success. Uh, you know, we closed off the street. We put a big uh, stage up there. We had magic shows and rock and roll concerts for the uh, early fireworks crowd. That was great. You know, we had a few thousand people there for that free portion. They, at 6 at 612, they turned around and watched the fireworks, which again were a smash hit. And can then I our music wait. festival kicked in before and after that. Can I just weigh in on the fireworks? I said this in the past and I just want to say it again. The 6 p.m. fireworks are transformational if you're especially if you have kids celebrating New Year's Eve. <clears throat> is just it's night and day because the kids can like really enjoy the fireworks you're not stressed out about they want to stay up until midnight you can then have like dinner after i mean it just makes it so much more enjoyable for everybody and it takes so much stress out of the equation for i mean me as a parent with four kids and it just has been amazing and changing them to going off of the um, parking deck has been incredible. Like you can just walk out your door and like see them from like every vantage point. I mean, it's just spectacular and it, it just sets the tone for the whole evening. So I just commend you on getting that done and scheduling them for when you schedule them for. And, and I just think it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Funny though. I still get some kickback, you know, a few people here and there still want midnight, but Hey, to me, that's all about the kids. The kids, the kids. So that worked. Uh, the rest yeah. of it, the music fest was great. Our headline acts, uh, that big room was packed for the two headline shows. Uh, our external venues were packed. Uh, and, you know, we, we snuck into the afternoon this year with some entertainment. And downtown was packed with people from uh, 1 o'clock on. So, so, so we accomplished accomplished an awful lot. We made a lot of people happy, vendors, hoteliers, restaurateurs. But most importantly, we uh, we made a lot of uh, attendees and visitors to the city happy. Okay, Bob, I have a proposal for you. Do you think you could take over 4th of July for us? No, that's that's uh, that's somebody else's yeah. operation. Yeah. I, I How did you go from year one to year two? I mean, was... Was there a significant growth? Is this something that's catching on? Do you see bigger, better things for your? Yeah, we were we were uh, plus thirty percent this year compared to last year as far as uh, revenue and attendees. So, so yes, uh, that, that that's pretty good stuff. Uh, and we hope to go forward. The challenge we got next year is New Year's is on a. New Year's Eve, I think, is on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or something this coming year. That that might be a little bit of a challenge. We'll see, uh, but we'll we'll pivot and uh, we'll we'll make it work. And we're going to continue to have a grand time and uh, keep it fun. Any any teasers on anything you'll be? Uh, obviously, this is early. I'm asking this just for fun, but any any ideas? Uh, maybe a reunion, an ABBA reunion, right here on uh, on, on Broadway or something. I can assure you that won't happen, but uh, we, uh, I, I, no, I do a data dump after this thing's out of the way because I have to prepare for my for my next big festival down south here. So I, I literally do a data dump. I sleep for four days. I'm just waking up now. Now I have to concentrate on 
Tampa, my next gig, and we'll start thinking how we do this thing again come April, May. You're going to bring in a big hip hop artist for me, right, Bob? Isn't that the plan no. for next year? <laughs> no. I like to I like to tease Bob because he knows I'm like a a big hip hop person, so I like to I like to rhythm him with my you know musical nonsense. Yeah, well, well, I mean, I believe look, well, hip hop. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely we we had a little bit of hip hop this year. We had that. Uh, I think I used to tease you on the uh, hardcore rap is what you wanted, right? <laughs> <laughs> Some call it hardcore rap. Some call it, you know, no, I'm teasing. Um, no, hip -hop's all right. we, we, we have hip hop, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure it all out when we get to uh, April, May. In the meantime, I got to buy a new ski jacket. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. Well, we're so appreciative for all of your efforts and thank you for coming on and updating everyone. And hopefully we can have you on prior to New Year's Eve this upcoming year to uh, tell us how things are going as you, um, as the planning starts coming together. I think he froze again. Okay. I think he's frozen. Congratulations, Bob. Very really good. Great. Yeah, we'll you guys did a great job, so. Have fun, in Utah. Have fun in Utah, in the down south. Uh, Oops, true. Sorry. I, I right, saw so him New Year's Eve. And, uh, you know, we know Bob is, is a guy, you know, got the hoodie and so forth. I'm telling you, he looks so spiffed up. I thought he was getting married. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. I remember, he, you know, or two years ago when he first did this, you know, we had our reservations about his ability to pull it off. But, boy, he really, he really proved all the, the naysayers wrong. He did. They do a great job. So, yeah, he's got a history of uh, creating events. You know, he's a music promoter. He's got a history of putting events like this together. And, and maybe maybe New Year's Eve was was the next step for him or, or one of the biggest, I don't know. So uh, sounds like what he's doing down in Tampa is pretty significant, but uh, I, uh, you know, he's got a lot of history here. Yeah. I mean, I was in one of the early planning meetings for last year's New Year's Eve event. And when you listen to him talk about musicians and, you know, regional, local, national bands, I mean, it's like, like I was like, I felt like he was speaking a different language. I mean, to just the depth of his knowledge was really, really impressive. Definitely knows what he's doing. Um, you guys, I want to pivot back to politics really quickly, if we have a quick minute, um, because I want some predictions from you guys on how long we hope or think the civility on the city council is going to last. And what do you what do you think? Because right now it feels really positive. I feel like everyone's on the up and up. But, you know, it's inevitably. Oh, I'll let Adam go go first. I don't, I don't have a short answer. The reason is I, th I think it's important we talk about the, you know, there's a city council meeting last night. And the, the, the biggest takeaway there was the new rules for the forum set forth by the mayor. And essentially what it does makes the the the, the, the city police are at arms. You guys, who's got bad audio? Sorry. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, Blame Dan. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll mute. Sorry, Adam. I didn't mean to interrupt. Keep going. No, no, no problem. So, and so essentially what it does is it, it limits distractions by the, by the gallery during public comment and it limits distractions during, do you, do you want to, because I think yeah. it's important to, because I think the, the, the K, I think this is going to be the trigger point of the next chaos of city hall. So do you want to go over the, the highlights? Do you want me to read these yeah. quickly? So um, rules of decorum and order. Members of the public shall not engage in behaviors which disrupt the conduct of the meeting. Prohibited conduct includes disorderly, disruptive, disturbing, delaying, or boisterous conduct, which may include, but is not limited to, hand clapping, stomping of feet, whistling, making noise, use of profane language or obscene gestures, yelling, or similar demonstrations which, con which uh, conduct Conduct interrupts, delays, or disturbs the peace and good order of the proceedings of the council. Uh, B, signs, placards, and distribution of literature are prohibited within the meeting room during a meeting. Uh, number three, sergeant at arms. The Saratoga Springs Police Department or any member of the SSPD is designated as the sergeant of arms for the purpose of maintaining order at the Saratoga Springs City Council meetings. Enforcement of rules of decorum. Upon a violation of the rules of decorum, the presiding officer shall verbally request the person or persons violating rule or rules to cease the conduct giving rise to the violation. If the violation continues, the presiding officer shall verbally warn the persons that they may be required to leave the meeting room if the violation continues. 
If the person does not cease the violation, the presiding officer shall declare the person to be out of order, at which time the surgeon of arms may take steps to remove the person or persons from the meeting room. If applicable, such person may be subject to civil and or criminal penalties that may apply to their conduct. So that's kind of like a, that's kind of the meat of it. Um, I know for me, I do think the consistency is like the most critical part here. Um, I did think that the specificity of um, disruptive, disturbing, boisterous conduct, hand clapping, stomping of feet, whistling, making noise, profane language. I routinely violate those rules at city council meetings. It's hard not to have like natural human reactions sometimes. And so um, I, I, I think I think that's a little overreaching, you know, to tell people they, they can't clap or make any kind of natural noise as a reaction to what's happening at the meetings. But aside from that, I'm hoping that the spirit of these new rules, um, you know, works. To, to the credit of, of the mayor, uh, Commissioner Cole and, and others, I believe, I'm not sure, but they, they didn't do this in a vacuum. They, um, at the pre-meeting yesterday morning, I believe it was, uh, they discussed how they went to the Committee on Open Government for to solicit input and feedback and so forth. And the, the Committee on Open Government, it's an offshoot of, I believe, New York State Department of State. Uh, they administer the open meetings law, or at least they're considered uh, a, a point of contact for it, as well as the freedom of information request. So the, that is the, uh, you know, the, the experts, if you will, in state government to address those issues. So they didn't they didn't just do this uh, willy nilly. They, they did it with some research. Uh, we have a comment here that's actually a good distinction. It's disturbing clapping that's prohibited, not clapping. Semantic, but maybe, but maybe the difference is important. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna, at, at the pre-agenda, they talked about this, and they essentially said, are people, you know, is your, is, is, you kind of have to look a little bit at intent of, of, of what, you know, what people, if it's just a kind of a fun, it's all right, it's one thing. If, if you're trying to disrupt. The person who's up there speaking and who's using their three minutes, then that becomes a problem. And and you know my concern is with the people who argue with these issues, it's a moving target with their problems. You know before it was oh people just have a you know a First Amendment right to speak their mind. No, this is not absolute. You can't you know so so it wasn't. So now that we have rules, now people are shifting. Saying, oh well, it's it's how are you going to make they're applied evenly, and it's you know the BLM um, the members were saying that you know, lady from the saying BLM was targeted. BLM was targeted because they're the ones grabbing the microphone out of people's hands. So you know that's why there were arrest made there. So I don't I, th th this argument now like oh well you have to you you can't you, you can't apply it. You have to apply it. E I don't think there's any issue there. I think people are looking to create drama whether or not. The fact of the matter is. <laughs> Rules that we have to now uh, that will keep our meetings running and keep them from being shut down and allow, make sure everybody has a chance. Every citizen has a chance to speak freely and without being uh, imposed on or intimidated. Okay, so I have to disagree with you in that. Oh, Adam, we lost you. Are you back? Um, in that, over the last three to four years, I have witnessed these rules be applied so inconsistently. I mean, people, as you know. I mean, as recently as the meetings in December, um, you know, people who were speaking favorably about the mayor blew past the four minute uh, time cutoff and were able to just keep talking and talking. Whereas people who are being more critical were, you know, gaveled down and shut down exactly at the four minute cutoff. And I think things like that are really important to be consistent about, you know, because it's not being consistent and especially doing it in a way that's, you know, showing your political favoritism just makes it kind of open season for any kind of behavior and just breeds, you know, conflict um, at those public comments uh, at the public comment period. And I think that, I mean, you really have to be consistent. And I, I don't think we've seen that over the last three or four years. This will be a significant test for Mayor Stafford, Stafford to make sure that he does do just what you're saying, Robin, uh, uh, evenly, fairly, because it, 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 if he doesn't, um, it, it could lead to litigation and more more problems yeah. with attorney general, et cetera. We don't want that. We do want people, even if I a thousand percent disagree with them, they have the right to speak and I want them to speak, but just not to the level that Adam was pointing out where we're ripping microphones out of your hand. But to your earlier point, Robin, about when will, you know, when will it uh, uh, get into chaos? What, what I'm hoping, and maybe I'm a fool here, you know, and I, and I know you guys probably agree with me, you know, the dissension, the disagreement, even fighting is okay. And really, 
necessary to some degree. What we don't want is the 2000, 2023 version of fighting, which was a nuclear battle. It, it was, you know, to the point of complete dysfunction and chaos. But even if there's spirited fighting and it gets a touch ugly, that, you know, I love the fact that we have Republicans and Democrats on this board. I, I don't want all Republicans. I don't want all Democrats. I want dissension. I want spirited debate. I, I, I want strong disagreements. And that can benefit us. So even if it looks a tad ugly on occasion, as long as it doesn't devolve like it did last year into the total ugliness, uh, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. And I'm hoping that's what happens, that it doesn't get overboard. It doesn't devolve into complete dysfunction. Yeah, because you can maintain professionalism and disagree and have a disagreement at the city council yeah. table. But I think, like, uh, you know, especially with, you know, Mayor Kim and what was happening, you know, in the last two years was just the, the fighting got just so nasty. And just the, I mean, there was zero professionalism. And it just went from zero to 60 in a way that was embarrassing and difficult to watch and had nothing to do with getting the business of the city done. So, yeah. I think their council members now all have the ability to, you know, keep it together as far as I can tell. Um, well, Dylan yeah. can sometimes be a little bit of a loose cannon, but, yeah. um, you know. To answer your question, Robin, I, I think this devolves that first time, that first time that the city council's tested, because I kind of, I, I feel like they're going to be. I feel like people are going to show up, that they're going to be disruptive. They're not going to yield when their time's up. Uh, and they're going to be, you know, they're going to be asked to leave. And, and you know, this is a big thing. Commissioner Moran at the big pre-agenda meeting kept on coming back to was, was uh, well, you, you know, if you lay hands on somebody, blah, blah, blah. If you're on video, you, you know, like, like that's, that was the worst thing in the world where the mayor was essentially saying, well, what are we going to do? We can't let people filibuster the meeting. So, so that's a, if that's a choice they make to speak over their three minutes, to be disruptive, to not listen to the mayor running the, then, then yeah, ultimately it could be because what else are we going to do? We're just going to let people, you know, shout, you know, shout down our, 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 our city business. Well, the other thing is you can just step outside the room and watch the live stream. So it's not like you're being denied access to the meeting and watching the meeting. Um, you know, if you're asked to leave, you can just continue to watch the meeting on your phone. You just won't have the ability to interrupt it. Yeah. And, and I didn't like when Commissioner Moran, when it was said, the person will be asked to leave, he jumped to, they're going to put your hands on them. And yeah. that's not how I followed the conversation going at the pre agenda. That's like worst case scenario. Right. And, and, and if at all, right? If, yeah. If, yeah. If, if at all, they, maybe, you know, um, so, so I, I don't know if they're necessarily going to put hands on somebody because they were asked to leave twice. There may be follow up. Uh, there may be follow-up legal action, but it doesn't. Well, they, that's a form of civil disobedience that we've that that you know forcing the police to physically remove somebody is a force of the family. So, are we going to see that civil disobedience? I, we've seen it before. I don't. There's any reason to think we won't. In the future. Yeah, it, but in the past, instead of you know having people leave, the meetings were shut down. The the council chose to you know shut down the meetings. Um, so yeah, it, it will be interesting. I, you know, I may go in two weeks and aggressively applaud and see what happens, guys. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's a joke. We'll, we'll visit you in uh, Balsam Spa. <laughs> yeah. Adam, you'll post my bail, right? Exactly. Um, well, I hope we can maintain this nice kind of civility and positivity that we're all feeling and kind of that that vibe that we had at the inauguration, because that's just in the best interest of everybody, you know, all Saratogians. We want to see pro productive and, um, you know, successful meetings. Yes. All right, kiddos, we're coming up on an hour. Should we, um, do you guys have some quick cheers and jeers before we log off? I've got, a, I've got some quick ones. Yeah. All right. Let's, Let's hear them, Dan. Let's see if I have my, do I still have my cheers and jeers animation? I think I do. Oh yeah. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> well, we don't get a new one for 2024. You I know. God. Practice? No, you still have like my like circa 1992 one. <laughs> but what do you have, Dan? Okay. Real quick. Cause we, we already talked about it. I, I, I love New Year's Eve. I got to mention that again. The inauguration. I love that. Um, I've got, and it's not going to be a jeer, uh, but it's a, a real disappointment within the, the, the positive of the inauguration. Um, uh, and maybe he had a valid excuse, but I was really disappointed, not surprised, but disappointed that Mayor Kim was not there. Uh, Commissioner, uh, past Commissioner Matanino was there. 
Um, it, you know, it's the foundation of our democracy that we have the peaceful transfer of power. Uh, the mayor of the city, again, in fairness, maybe he had a family member ill, but it, it, barring something like that, he should have been there. And I'm disappointed. Not a jeer, but I'm disappointed. I hear that. I hear that. Do you have a cheer for us? Oh, you did uh, your cheer. New Year's yes. Eve. I had because I had the, the disappointment within the cheer. Right. <laughs> Adam, what do you got? Uh, you know, I'll just, I, I'll just, I want to cheer uh, Mayor Safford. I thought his first meeting and his first pre-agenda meeting, I watched them. Uh, you know, he was, he kind of, see, the, the city came in and set the tone of a leader who's, all right, this is the rules. These are the rules we follow. He wasn't, you know, I think, I think Mr. Shane B and Commissioner Moran were trying to, trying to bait him in a little bit into, you know, into why he came up with these policies and how they're going to affect people. And he just, he just was very steady in his course. And did something that when we saw Mayor Kim with the, with kind of a mandate of taking over the, you know, I'm getting rid of the, the city attorneys and <laughs> safety, you know, on day one, trying to revolutionize the office where, where Mayor Safford just kind of came in, I thought was very respectful of the office, respectful that he's new to the office, uh, but respectful to the, to the role he played and just kind of, as a you know, as a leader, the adult in the room saying, "Listen, he, this, these people, we're, we're all going to play by them. Let's 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 be productive." So uh, that's my cheer. I do not have a cheer today. Um. Well, I just want to kind of uplift this current spirit that Commissioner Gall have articulated of like you know anyone who wants to get things done will engage with regardless of party because I do know that. This is the first Republican mayor in over a decade. I do know that party politics are likely lurking in the background, but it would just be great for them to stay in the background as long as possible and to really, you know, keep going with this city over party mentality as long as we can. Because I, I just, I truly don't think partisanship has a place on the city council. The issues facing Saratoga aren't traditionally partisan. It's not like paid parking is a Republican or a Democratic issue. Like really none of the issues are. And so I don't think voting at the city council table should be. And so I hope we're able to kind of um, continue on with this uh, uh, city over party vibe. Um, I think that would be awesome. Uh, I'm going to do a double cheer. My double cheer, Dan, I'm doing this for both of us. This is for our favorite team, the Bills. I need good Bills vibes, guys, going into Sunday. Good Bills vibes. Right, Dan? Sunday night. Hey, if they can't beat this hobbled Miami team, then they don't deserve to be in the playoffs. Or, I mean, that wasn't really the cheer I was looking for. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm sorry, lifelong fan. I, I, uh, I've, I've gone through the rough times. So, but I, I mean, like, they're going to beat them, of course. I guess this is my point. Exactly. And I just wish it was a not a 20 game. Uh, I'm going to have a little struggle staying awake, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, well, guys, as we said earlier, we will be back to our regular Wednesday schedule. You can find us anywhere you watch podcasts, um, subscribe to our YouTube station so you can get alerts when we go live on Wednesdays. And uh, I'm looking forward to season three, you guys. And look at that. We kept the first one under an hour. Great I job. know. All right. Over and out.